Hey, welcome to Snowmobiler Television. On this week's show, we're in the province of Quebec to ride both on and off trails, and we've also got a look at Yamaha's 2019 sneak peek. So right now, it's time to ride. STD has been brought to you by Yamaha. Conquer snow with Yamaha. Ford F-Series, Canada's best-selling line of trucks for 52 years. Tough, smart, capable. Kimpex, fueled by fun. It's no secret that the trails in Quebec are some of the best anywhere. And when you ride here, it's easy to see how that reputation has come about. Now, over the years, I've ridden in plenty different regions across this province, but the abitibi Temiskaming region is one place that I've never been. Yeah, so I've ridden kind of all over anywhere there's snow, and really I've, I've ridden a lot of places throughout Quebec as well, and I've had that privilege, but never this area. And a lot of the buddies that I've got that uh, I might ride with around home, a lot of them come up to the Val d'Or area, Abitibi Temiskaming, and ride from here. And for years, they've been telling me how great it is to come here, and never for circumstance, never had a chance to come. And this was really my first chance to be in this region of Quebec, and it's been absolutely outstanding. So we got a little bit of a late start in the trail side of things, getting from Val d'Or at the, the Lescal Hotel and Suites down uh, to Sanitaire for lunch and then across the Val Bazard Sauvage. Um, it was definitely an interesting experience. I mean, one thing I will say about the trails, they were always top notch. The signage was absolutely amazing. The trails were at least two groomers wide, it felt like at all times. Um, and you could really follow the signs, know exactly how far you're going to be, almost in five kilometer increments to some destinations. And you could judge uh, the corner speed and entry speed purely based on the number of red arrows they had in the corner. If there was no red arrows, you could probably carry your momentum through the corner. If you had one, you had to brake check a little bit, and then two and three meant really put the binders on and, and get that puppy turn around. But it was definitely a fun and exciting experience. And the one thing I will add is, because we had a late start at the beginning of the trip, we started riding into the night and the lack of traffic on the trails at night and the fact that you can see that headlight coming the other way, you could really open it up a little bit more on, on the trail system out here. Um, the other thing that I will add to that as well is when you did stop and shut all the headlights off, it was mind blowing the amount of stars and, and the wilderness you could see and enjoy the, the night experience out here because you really are in the wilderness between destinations and it's quite a unique feeling of being in the middle of, of that, this destination. So a lot of the guys that had experience here that I'd ride with again back at home that were telling me, you gotta come, you gotta come, you gotta come up here. Um, each one of them said that you know the trails are really second to none. Uh, accommodations are fabulous. The food is, you're gonna roll away from the table every night and uh, the snow conditions are again second to none and really they were right on all fronts. Um, the trails being groomed as wide as they were, uh, as flat as they were, were absolutely outstanding to ride and we made the transition from leaving Val d'Or late in the day and we rode in through the evening to arrive here at uh, the Val Bazaar uh, Sauvage at about 10 o'clock at night but that experience was, was great to have that part of the day's ride. Um, perfect trail conditions the whole way and 270 kilometers and you know really have no bumps to speak of. Uh, that's saying something about how, how well the trails are groomed and the pride that the clubs here take in, uh, in maintaining those trails. Based on the, the experience that was set for me riding here in the past, uh, this ride lived up to everything I expected from this region. I mean, you could probably count on one hand the number of bumps we hit between Val d'Or and the Balbazar and that just speaks to in and of itself. When you're doing a 270 kilometer ride, you expect to at least run into a couple of rough trails going between clubs in different districts where they didn't groom at the same time. And that's just simply not the case out here. 
I mean, the trails are always top notch and the experience is second to none. Uh, there was no fear of, of running out of gas between the destinations. There's plenty of fuel stops along the way um, and just overall a very great experience out in Abitibi Temiskaming. I don't think I've ever been through uh, a traffic light on a snowmobile before. Um, I've been through traffic lights that, you know, you're sitting next to a car going through a traffic light. I've done that before, but this traffic light back in Valdor was specifically for a snowmobile. You had a button you had to push and the light would go green for you, the traffic would stop, you'd cross the road and you're on your way again. So that was kind of a neat experience. Again, it, it shows the level of commitment from uh, not only the, the, the people who are building the trail system, but the towns and the region to the snowmobile industry. It really shows that they want you here and they're inviting you here and they want you to have the best snowmobiling experience possible. Getting back to the Balbazar, um, coming in here, it really is five-star snowmobiling experience. I mean, it is a log cabin. Um, it's, it's a paradise. You walk in, you're walk, treated to a six course meal to, to celebrate your day. So, I mean, um, and then the staff lives on site. So you have the same people serving you and getting to know you if you stay here for more than one day and more than one meal. And it, it just creates a really f family friendly, I would say. And you feel like you're part of a bigger family just coming here and that it's just all snowmobilers getting along, having a great time and just enjoying a log cabin in the middle of the middle of this beautiful region that you really don't get to experience in many other provinces. So, There's been something I've been trying to avoid my whole life and that's buying a set of Crocs. But here at the Balbazard, they provide them. And I gotta tell you, these things are amazing. four buggies that we brought with us. I think on the trail side of things, we, we really hit the nail on the head. Uh, the XTX was built for these trails. Yeah, it's a longer track sled. We've got studs in it. It does have a lot of traction in the, uh, in the track area, but on the trail, uh, you know, you could, you could hustle that puppy down the trail. It was a lot of fun. And then once you got kind of everything up to temperature, it would belch flame at the side of it. it was just that just, has got to be a good thing when you're bel belching flame out of the side of your snowmobile at the exhaust. Um, the other uh, sleds we brought, the 850 MXZRS, was absolutely outstanding on the trails. Uh, the Polaris Assault, again, a, a little bit more tippy because it's sort of that crossover type of sled, but it still worked phenomenally. And then, of course, we had the, uh, the Titanic with us, the Polaris Titan, hauling all the gear. Uh, we had a two overnight stay, so all of our extra socks and underwear had to be packed somewhere and the, the Titan hauled it all here in, uh, in speed and style. So we really, I think, for the trail side of things, we probably could have, couldn't have done much better with the sleds that we brought. When you transfer those sleds to the off-trail experience, uh, we probably sh were a little bit uh, undergunned, I think you could say, for what we were in for. We came a little underprepared, I would say. I mean, I thought we were prepared. We had, uh, you know, essentially cross over snowmobiles. Um, a Sidewinder with a 141 inch track, an Assault with a 144, which is probably our best sled, and uh, the Titan with a 155, but then when your guides for the day pull out four summits with uh, three inch lugs and 163 inch tracks, you start to question your decisions a little bit, but uh, no, it was, definitely, it was definitely still an awesome experience. Daniel and the guides, they said the night before we were in for our off-trail adventure that they were all going to be riding summits. and. Uh, they were going to give us a summit so that the Titan can stay behind and not uh, not have to wheel that thing through uh, through some of the tight trails that we were in for, but still didn't really expect the type of snow that uh, and the depth of snowpack that we were headed for. Um, we rode out of the Balbazar for about 5k to our first uh, first logging road, and at that point we were still in the uh, in the uh, the fire zone that came through here a number of years. So uh, it, the snow was deep but it wasn't crazy yet. And it was, you know, totally doable. Uh, the MX ZRS was having a good time. You know, it could get through that. But as our day progressed, it was, it was becoming more and more clear that the sleds that we brought with us were, were gonna have a, a more and more difficult time getting through. We got them through, 
but it was a team effort to get all of our, our stuff through these trails when you're following other guys with uh, summits and they're having absolutely no problem getting through stuff and they're climbing and they're doing all kinds of crazy stuff and you're kind of sitting there on an MXZ looking up going, yeah, I'm not doing that. You're just, you're just praying that you can get through after they pound the trail down so you've got a hole essentially in the snow that you could drive through. Well, I know this area sets the expectations and standards really high for trail quality, prep, um, signage, everything along those lines. The one thing I wasn't prepared for and was blown away by, uh, this is the first time I got to experience the off-trail side of things. And uh, needless to say, it was an absolutely amazing experience. Twenty nineteen is going to be a big year for Yamaha, not just for sleds in the lineup, but for the lineup itself. So let's start with a sled that's got me excited, the SRX. That's right, that Blue Lake Racer is back. Well, for 2019, we're really excited to bring the SRX LE um, back into the equation. The SRX name's coming back because we have a top speed Lake Racer uh, snowmobile but a lot of people are really gonna enjoy this because we feel like maybe the last five or 10 years there's been a lot of emphasis on mountain snowmobiles and crossover snowmobiles, but one of the sort of huge markets that's kind of been, we feel underserved has been this um, trail riding, lake racing kind of uh, uh, unit or this customer. So we think this new SRX is gonna bring back some of the, uh, the positive feelings of that name coming back just like Snow Scoot did last year and uh, the SRX is going to be pretty much the fastest snowmobile you can buy right out of the box. Well, we've gone back to a one inch log on the track and that might seem like a bit of a throwback, but uh, what we found was when we've got a 137 inch footprint, the one inch log hel helps to accelerate it quicker. And you might be saying, well, why not a 129 inch? But we found that with the amount of torque that the Genesis engine can supply, that a bigger footprint um, got that sled moving a lot quicker and a lot faster. So um, we've gone to the one inch log height there. It's also got a lower ride height. Um, so that's been a very sort of uh, positive uh, development for that sled because it allows it to stay a bit lower and a bit flatter. Um, and one of the other things it has is IQS uh, suspension, which is different from most of the sleds in our lineup. Well, the Fox IQS uh, system will be on the SRX LE as well as the LTX LE, but predominantly it will be as a new feature on the SRX LE and the intelligent quick switch basically allows the rider to adjust suspension on the fly electronically via the handlebar. So, most systems you have to get off and do the clicker switch and get off your snowmobile, but the nice thing about this is that while you're riding on the snowmobile, on the trail, or whatever conditions change, you can simply do it by pushing uh, the push button application on the left side of the handlebar control. So, um, obviously we think this is going to be a, a benefit that riders will really enjoy and something we think that will improve their snowmobile ride. Basically the new handlebar arrangement just allows the rider to be a little bit more user friendly with um, the control system. Basically, if they've got large gloves on or um, cold fingers and things like that, it's a little bit easier for them to toggle between the things they need to do. So it's an easier kill switch in order to shut down. It's, uh, the buttons are easier, and of course, with the IQS on uh, the SRX, it allows them to switch into uh, different suspension applications that much easier just by push-button design. Well, we had a great response with the snow scoot last year, and this year we think it's going to be just as good because we're going to bring out electric start for the snow scoot. So, um, this basically allows those little riders to get out there and start that engine on, on their own. Of course, they're going to need some parental supervision, but uh, it allows them to get going on their own and that might save a couple um, moms and dads from having to get off the side of the trail and go start it up for them if they've encountered some, uh, some issues on the trail. So just basically makes it more rider friendly for a younger, uh, younger customer. 2019 also sees changes in strategy for Yamaha. That's because next year, a lot of models are not going to make it into the lineup. But this doesn't mean Yamaha is giving up on the snowmobile industry. In fact, it's quite the opposite. One of the things we've wanted to do is correct some inventory that's lying around out in the, in the market. So um, basically what happened is the last couple of years have been kind of soft on the snow season um, and there hasn't been as many sales as we would have liked and there's an inventory imbalance out there right now. So the number one thing we want to do next year is correct our inventory. And what that means is you can do it in one of two ways. The one way you can do it is by spending a lot of promo money to get rid of old non-currents, but we don't generally like doing it that way because what it means is that it devalues the unit value for a current customer. So 
Um, if a current customer had just bought a Sidewinder last year and then this year they see a whole bunch of money <laughs> back on, a, on the Sidewinder model that they had bought, it makes their unit uh, not worth as much. So we don't like to do it that way. We want to do it a different way this year and we're going to just limit a lot of our production for this year. So um, a lot of segments will not get a 2019 edition, but basically that is to correct this inventory so that we can become a lot more sustainable um, and, and have a lot more growth moving forward into the future. So. Um, Basically, there are some units that are going to not be back for 2019, um, but what that means is a lot of our fast-moving, high-volume um, high units are going to be in the lineup still. So units like Sidewinder LTX DX, um, LTX SE, XTX SE, um, those units will be in place as well as the Snow Scoot, obviously. So a lot of the units that we sell through very well on are going to be there back and they'll be 2019 versions, but some of the ones where we haven't seen as, as much sale, they're going to just stay on the shelf for a year. With the new strategy, Yamaha's Power Surge event is going to become even more important to you as a buyer because many of the sleds in the lineup are only going to be available as a spring order. This year on the Spring Power Surge, uh, there are five LE models and they're all Sidewinders, but the key thing here is that you're going to get great features and great upgrades on them um, and the best time to buy is in the spring. But the re you know, another reason why it's really important to put that deposit down in the spring is that some of those, um, those models will be the only model available in that segment for the year. So in terms of a BTX LE or an MTX LE, you can only get those on spring deposit. There won't be a, a, a version available in the fall, like an SE version in the fall for you to pick up at your dealer. So if you're thinking about one and you're on the fence, and you're going to go for one next year, place that deposit this year because it's really important that you do because we got to make sure that our build quantities are correct. Yeah, so Spring Power Surge is obviously very important to us for this year. Um, and one of the things that we've done to kind of entice customers a little bit more is, you know, traditionally we've done extended warranty and uh, parts and accessory credits and maybe a jacket or a special edition shirt or something like that. Uh, but this year what we're also going to do is have a, a sweepstakes available. So there'll be an early bird prize as well as an actual sweepstakes throughout uh, the duration of the promotion. And what that means is that if you place a deposit on a snowmobile, uh, through Spring Power Surge and you accept delivery, you'll be entered into a draw to win a number of really cool prizes. So, you know, when we start handing away some free Yamahas, whether it's an ATV or a pressure washer or a generator or something like that next year, um, it'll be probably a pretty fun time. When you, if you can go pick up your sled and also get a, a generator out of the equation or a, an ATV or something like that, it's going to be, I think, a big win for a lot of our customers. We're going to be here selling snowmobiles for a long time and that's our direction. We're making this uh, product group work and we're making it work well. So. Uh, we're committed to it and we want our customers to enjoy Yamaha Snowmobiles for a long time. Technology and trails have been riding buddies for a while now and apps have been developed to help you tour throughout the country. But here in Abbey TV to Miskaming, they felt they needed to offer riders in this area more detailed information about their system. So they developed an app of their own to do just that. In tourism, Abbey TV to Miskaming, we decided to uh, develop an app. Uh, for snowmobilers. It's very important to have an app that uh, where you can find all the services around the trails, really close to the trails. Okay, so all the gas station, all the, uh, the accommodation places, all the restaurants, so all the view too, the, inter the uh, interesting points of view. Are, we think it's very important to have all the information in that apps for the security of people. So we put uh, information like for a gas station, we have the opening hours. Uh, sometimes it's, uh, you will find a gas station really far away from a city. So it's important to, to know if it's opened. So you, if you decide to go that way, but you have to uh, expect it's, it is open for your security. To find uh, the apps, it's in the Apple Store or Google Play. You have to type My Snowmobile Guide, you will find it and you download it. It's for all our region network, so you have all the trails. You will find in that app too all the trails condition, so you will know if there's a problem with a trail, if there's trees inside, there's information about notes like that so that can help uh, you plan your trip. We decided to uh, make our own apps 
because we uh, think it's important to have uh, all the information inside. Okay, we don't have we can't have regards uh, on the information in other apps, but we can control our information when we're the designer of the apps. So on the other apps, uh, we couldn't find all the services we had we have here in the region for snowmobilers. So we uh, noticed that people services have to pay to be on their apps. So we didn't want that here because we think it's important for the security. We're far away from the, the, the big city. Sometimes you're in the wilderness. Uh, it's important to that uh, for snowmobilers to know where the services are for the security. When we decided to do the, the app, we had to uh, snowmobile all the network to get the data, okay? So uh, during one winter, I had to travel around the place with my friends. We were two snowmobile and we did all the trails, okay? And we stopped at all the place where we could have services and take I took a waypoint of everything. I had to make sure all the trails intersected. So, um, so it, wa it was a, a big uh, amount of work to do that. But now that we have all the data in the right place, we can do the paper map and it will be really the picture of uh, the region now. We really love uh, the snowmobilers here in Abitibi-Timiskaming. We welcome them in our family. It's like a big family here. And um, we want to make sure that they have all the, the, the tools or all the, the information to uh, really enjoy their staying here in Abitibi-Timiskaming. If you choose to ride in this region, and that's something you absolutely should do, download the free app to get the most out of your experience here in the Abitibi to Miskaming area. For me, this trip has been something I've wanted to do for a long time, and it's lived up to its expectation. The trails, the accommodations, the food, oh boy, the food has been better than expected. But now, I've got one big problem. I just don't want to leave. A little bit western again. I don't think we better use that shot. Too much tree carnage. 